creating bar graphs. Suppose we decide to collect data about the number of students in this class who go to school by bike, bus, car, or on foot. It is useful to organize the data in a table first. In the first column, we indicate how students come to school. In the second column, we write the count using numbers or tally marks. Students who take their bikes, raise your hands. So five of you take their bikes to school. How many take the bus? Eight. How many come by car? Three. And how many of you walk to school? Nine students. Excellent. One way to represent this count data is to draw a bar graph, categories. And let's say that coloring one square would represent a count of one. We put this information to the side of the graph. We have five students who take their bikes to school. So on top of the bike category, we color the first square, and another right above it, and another, and so on until we've colored five squares. Notice how all colored squares combined make a long bar. Moving on to the next category, there are eight students who take the bus to school. So on top of the bus category, we color eight squares. And there are three students who come by car. So on top of the car category, we color three squares. Finally, there are nine who walk to school. So on top of the walk category, we color nine squares. We are going to use technology today to basically create a bar graph, but instead of making our own table and drawing our own chart and coloring in each box, we're going to let the computer do the work for us. And we're going to use a program called MS Excel to create this project. Everybody give me an X with your arms. That's what you're going to be looking for when you go to your computer. To be a three today, you will be able to demonstrate an understanding and independently be able to create a spreadsheet using Microsoft Excel, utilizing all the tools that are taught and it must include a chart or graph, okay? If you want to score a four today, you will be able to utilize tools beyond what was taught. So if you are able to use a tool in Microsoft Excel that was not covered in the lesson, fantastic. You're a four. You already know more than you need to know, okay? So let's look at what we're gonna be working on today. Okay, I had you make an X with your arms when we started talking about Excel because that's what you're going to see on your icon on your desktop. So everybody see the green X for Excel? MS Excel 2016. I'm going to click on that and that will open me up to the main menu. I'm going to click a blank workbook and here is my spreadsheet. We're going to do data very similar to the way that the data was done in the example video at the very beginning. There they collected data on their classroom. We're going to collect data on our classroom today. They collected data on how kids get to school. We're going to collect data on what we wear. So I thought it'd be fun to see what color, what shirt color was the most popular. So at the top, I need to quit saying so. 
we need to type shirt color. We need to label our columns. This is a column. It goes up and down. This is a row. It goes side to side. Our columns that go up and down are labeled by letters. Our rows that go from side to side are labeled by numbers. So in box A1, and it's not called a box, it's called a cell. Everybody say cell. Make a box with your fingers. That is a cell. If you go to prison, you live in a box. What is that box called? A cell. Everything goes in that cell. Cell A1. Column A, row 1. This is my cell. I type in the words shirt color. Now you may see that the R doesn't quite fit in there. Everyone look up. Real close. See the line that divides A and B? If I click on the line that divides A and B and I drag it over, it makes that column wider. And now I can fit more information, more text, more something in that cell. I like my information in Microsoft Excel to be centered. And I want everything centered. I don't just want the title centered. I want everything centered. So I'm going to click on column A. And I'm going to go up here to alignment and see these groups of lines. Well, if I hover over them, that's going to tell me how to align my font. This one aligns everything to the left side. This one's going to put everything in the center. This one's going to align everything to the right side. I want everything in the center. So I'm going to click on that and see how that shifted. Now I'm going to continue listing my shirt colors. So I'm still in column A because all of the colors should stay in column A. Row 2 is going to be white. I'm going to use my arrow down black, arrow down, blue, arrow down, yellow, arrow down, red, arrow down, pink, arrow down, purple, arrow down, orange, arrow down, green, white, black, blue, yellow, red, pink, purple, orange, green, and I'm going to put other here just in case I forgot something. Done with column A. I have all my shirt colors. I'm good. So now I need to go to column B. Well, before I even start in column B, I'm going to click on the letter B and see how it highlights the entire column. I know that whatever I'm doing right now while it's highlighted is going to happen to everything in this column. So I'm going to go back up to here to alignment, and I'm going to click on the second one over because I love everything centered in Excel. Pet peeve of mine. I click on the top cell B1, and in the video, they counted. This would have been how people got to school, and this was what? the number of students. So I'm going to put up here number of students. Now, when I click off a of cell B1, did that fit? Nope, sure didn't. So I take my mouse up here and I click on the line that divides letters B and C. I click on it and I drag it. Now it's big enough. I'm going to take my mouse and click on cell B2, and I'm going to start to collect my data. So I'm going to look around the room. I'm going to look around the room, and I'm going to count how many people have on white shirts. And then I'm going to use the arrow down button. 
I'm going to count how many people have black shirts. Arrow down. How many people have blue shirts? Arrow down. How many people have yellow shirts? Arrow down. How many people have red shirts? Arrow down. How many people have pink shirts? Arrow down. How many people have purple shirts? Arrow down. How many people have orange shirts? Arrow down. How many people have green shirts? Arrow down. How many people have another type of shirt? Okay. You are going to collect this data on your own. When you are done collecting your data, you can go ahead and format the fonts. So for example, if I want to change the font, that's what it looks like. I take my mouse and I click on cell A1 and I'm going to drag it until all of these are highlighted. Guys, this is very important. Look up here. My shirt color is not grayed out like the rest of it, so it's not highlighted. It's not selected. So you think, but it is because look very closely in Microsoft Excel. The cell that you start with your selection stays white. But it is inside this green outline. See this green box outline? That lets me know that this is selected as just as the other parts are. So now I can come up here and I can click on this little arrow and it gives me the drop down for all the different fonts that I can choose. So I'm going to choose a font that I want my words to be. Pretty like it. If I can't read it, is it a good font to use? No, it is not. The next thing that I might want to change is, to change all of it, is the font size. I can use the numbers here and choose a number, or I can just click on this big A and it'll make it bigger, or the small A and it'll make it smaller. I do want a little bit bigger. So I think I'm going to have to make my columns wider as well. So I'm going to go back and widen up those columns to fit my new fonts. There we go. And I want to reselect some cells because I want to select just my titles. And again, this is where you get to explore on your own. So you don't, yours does not have to look just like mine. But I like my titles to be a little different. So they stand out. So I'm going to make them bold and italicized. So shirt color is a little different. Another thing that you may want to do is you may want to change the color of the cells themselves. So this is the color blue. Click on the paint can, pick the color blue. This is yellow. Highlight, select these two cells, yellow. Select these two cells, and remember the cell that you start on stays white, but it's inside this green frame, so I know I've selected it. Okay, it's going to be red. That's better. Select these two cells. It's going to be pink for more colors. See, more colors right here. Select, 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 okay, maybe for this one, I want to change my font color. The A with the red underline is my font color. Click on this, make it white, and then still selected, so I'm going to also change this. That's fun. Or maybe I also want the font to be blue as well. It's to be a version of red. That's going to be hard to read. A version of pink. 
Okay? I can make these words a bright orange. Oops. You can format your text from the data that you collected any way that you want. This is where we're going to stop today. We're going to continue with this next week when you come in.